Hey everyone, on today's show, the triumphant return of the judge. Me and my colleagues, we go at each other in the fantasy court, and it's Wednesday, we talk some buy or sell. Make sure you stay tuned. Hey, it is draft season. Literally today, we have our listener league draft, and you want to know what I hope our listeners in that league don't have? What? The ultimate draft kit. We pour our heart, soul, time, full-time energy, strength, and effort for months into preparing the most accurate set of information and draft tools to help you win. We have hundreds of player profile videos, all of the sleepers, the breakouts, the busts, everything you need to make sure that you set a foundation to win the championship this year can be found at ultimatedraftkit.com. Today's episode is brought to you by 20th Century Fox's new film, Ad Astra. Brad Pitt stars as Roy McBride, an astronaut who travels to the outer edges of the solar system to find his missing father and unravel a mystery that threatens the survival of our planet, Jason. The answers we seek are just outside our reach. Ad Astra in theaters September 20th. Hey, this is Kenyon Drake. You're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Andy, Mike, and Jason. Back with you for Wednesday, August 28th. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for entrusting a little bit of your fantasy team with us. We, we're going to do right by you today. We won't let you down. Yes. Well, I will. <laughs> but these guys are pretty solid. Um, thank you, Jason. I appreciate that compliment. Oh, I was talking about Brooks. Oh, okay. And uh, Borland, Borland over there. The, these guys, our producers, yes, are they're very good. They're very talented. We'll include one of them on today's show. We've got Fantasy Court making its return on the show today. It's about time. Ooh. Judge do, Giamatti do. will rule. He will preside over the courtroom. We have a number of arguments that we'll make against one another. Brooks, you're looking handsome today, bud. Don't feel thank a, you, Mike. Yeah, don't feel a pressure, by the way, to like balance out your rulings if all of my arguments are incredible and others aren't. That's just probably what's going to happen. So don't feel, you know, like you're going to offend anybody to rule correctly, Brooks. Also, I heard Andy call you ugly this morning. <laughs> well, both of those things are true that you are looking great, and I definitely heard uh, other people yeah, Jason say, uh, you know, bad things, uh, uh, unspeakable things. <laughs> Brooks, I believe that you are incredibly intelligent, not just handsome, and that your wisdom will see what yeah. is right. Yeah, this is this is good. This is a good justice system we have running on the show. So we've got Fantasy Court a little bit later. Got Buy or Sell on the show. Some news we'll get into. I believe we're, what, 11 days out from our first Sunday? And uh, the NFL season starts that Thursday, so we are, you know, we're right there. Eight yes. Days. We just have to endure some fourth stringers running around on the green grass this weekend. But uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The website's the fantasyfootballers.com. Mike has a brand new article mm -hmm. Mike's Ultimate Value Fantasy Football Hit Squad. Ha! Ha! ha. 2019 is best, most favorite value in each and every round. Based on average draft position, you can read that on the website. It's very, very well written, Mike. It's very valuable. <laughs> okay, yes. All right, um, it is Wednesday, which means... Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, we're going to play a little buy or sell to start the show. Some more narratives, some more storylines for 2019, your fantasy football team. Let's go with uh, Stephon Diggs receiving yards. Last year, he set a career high with 1,021 yards in 15 games played. Do you believe 
He oh, so these are all thousand yard themed, Brooks. Yes, yeah, yes, sir. Mm. Yeah. Will they nifty, top the thousand nifty. yard? So, mark? do you believe buy or sell Stephon Diggs one thousand yards receiving? What do you say? I am going to buy Stephon Diggs over a thousand yards. The I mean, last year he was averaging 68 yards a game before that, 61 before that, 69. It's just a matter of does he play all or does he play enough games? And Stephon Diggs, you know, he needs 14 or 15 to hit that 1,000-yard mark. And Minnesota's passing offense is Stephon Diggs, it's Adam Thielen. That's it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I mean, Chad Beebe, I'm sorry. Yeah. Kyle Rudolph, Herb Smith. Yeah, you'll be worked in here and there. But pro the the targets are going to go to Diggs. It, I, he will get enough work even with the the fear. The people are they're riding in the streets. They're afraid of Minnesota's passing game. I'm Look, not. I'm not. I, I like Diggs a lot. We've said that from before he was a breakout player, how talented a wide receiver he is. Yes. But I'm going to sell here because his over the last three years, his 16-game pace, so that's giving him the full season, is an average of 1,056 yards. It's just barely breaking the 1,000, and that's on a 16-game pace. Now they might pass for fewer yards this year, so maybe he could play 16 and not get there, but more than likely, he doesn't play 16 because he doesn't usually make it a full 16. Or he so, never does. That that's would another be way. He never has so far yet. Yeah, four years I in. I will buy it. I think 62 yards a game. I think that's what you'll get. Uh, if not a little more from Stefan Diggs. So I'll buy. Philip Lindsay rushing yardage last year, 2018, 1,037 yards. Does he top the 1,000 yard mark? I'm selling. I'm selling it. It was a heck of a season for Philip Lindsay. I think he's a great player, a dynamic player, but I am selling this one. Um, I just don't believe he's going to have the level of efficiency he had last year. And if you just. I don't know, five, six extra carries for Royce Freeman a week. A healthy Royce Freeman, I don't think Lindsey gets there. Ah, man, this is tough for me. I, I, I've been rising on Lindsey lately just from the standpoint of realizing that he's in such a similar situation. He was so good to start last season. I mean, he was on a 1,200-yard pace before he kind of broke down at the end. I think I'm going to buy. I think I, mm. I, I'm, I'm going to buy that Philip Lindsey cracks the 1,000 yards again. I think he's being undervalued now early in the offseason even middle you know just a month ago he was still higher on draft boards where you know it was a little risky to take him but now I mean he's just he keeps falling and that's the reason I'm like I, I feel like I need to I need to swing the pendulum back I'm gonna sell too because of my man Royce D Freeman that's his middle name Royce D I you, that, that's what he's listed as on, okay. on Pro Football Reference. I thought you were just making up a middle initial for <laughs> emphasis, which I didn't really understand the value of that. Probably Dwayne. <laughs> Proba just, prob probably? Really? Odds on. Yeah. I'm going to go so with... So if somebody's middle initial I'm going is D, Douglas. the odds are that it's Dwayne? Well, I think there are odds. They might not be good, but there are odds <laughs> that say it could be Dwayne. Royce D. Royce Dwayne Freeman. Incredible. <laughs> I'm going. I'm analysis. going Douglas. So you're selling. You're selling because yeah, of I'm Royce. selling. Yes. Um, let's go with uh, Hot Lockett himself. Over. Hot Lockett. Tyler Lockett last year was a career high. Still hasn't broken a thousand yards in his career. Nine hundred and sixty-five. But I remember saying such things about Devontae Adams before last year. That's which, by the way, Devontae right. Adams did not have a thousand yards receiving in a season before last year's. Campaign. I remember saying things about that about Melvin Gordon because even though in because in, it's fun to do right, but the reality is Tyler uh, I mean, Ty, Hot, Tyler Hot Lockett is going to dominate this year. He will definitely have well more than a thousand. Well yards. more. <laughs> well more. Well more. <laughs> wow, that's right. I I stand by it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll sell it. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I think I'll be just under. Wow. I'm going to sell it. Boom. Wow, we are not in agreement today. Guess we should have fantasy courted that one, huh? Oh, I would love to fantasy court uh, Tyler Lockett all over you two fools. Uh, and I say over you two fools, but I feel like it's more against Mike. This is a strange beginning to the show. <laughs> I feel attacked. Fine. The grammar has reached new lows. Uh, we're both selling, though. It's uh, look, Tyler Lockett is uh, – Jason is just fully bought – he's on board. He's bought into everything. I 
still don't know what to make of Tyler Lockett. His last season was an absolute enigma where he skyrocketed. I mean, he was averaging, you know, about 600 yards a game, two to three touchdowns a year. That's That was his average until he absolutely exploded. Now yeah. that you have to project a volume increase with Doug Baldwin gone. Yeah, but you had but, games last year where Russell Wilson completed 11 passes, yes. 10 passes, 12 passes, 13 passes. That's not a lot of work. I think there'll be too many of the disappearing at games to get to 1,000, um, even though he'll be by far the best wide receiver in the system. That's yep. where I'm. I think that's where, that's where I'm where at. I lean. It's tight, though. I mean, I don't. I'm not talking about regression in total yardage. I think he'll be around the same mark. Maybe more receptions, less big plays. I know you love him, Jason. I, I know that you you love him so good. More whatever ev- you say. Yes. Uh, you know everything out of the beat reporters I trust from the Seattle area talk about how involved, how highlighted Tyler Lockett has been in camp. We didn't see that in preseason until week three, but week three came around and it was like everything they had been talking about was, oh my goodness, this is the Tyler Lockett show. I'm on board. I mean, he was highlighted last year. That's who I'm going to go ahead and stop if I'm a defense in the National Football League. I'll go ahead and stop the one named receiver. Impossible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's harder Impossible. said than done for Tyler Lockett. He's a great wide receiver. He is. He was featured and he hit on literally every single deep Marvin ball. Jones two years ago. Yes. It reminds me of that situation. Yeah. Um, okay, that was... You can't really say... Like, I know he was featured uh, a little bit last year, but he wasn't like the clear-cut one. He had 71 targets on the year. Great point. <laughs> That's the, over, and that, uh, that over, will lead the team. If he, got, if he got that amount of targets again this year, it would lead okay. the team. Uh, do you guys have your rankings pulled up? I am yes. curious now that we're on this topic. How many targets do you two gentlemen have Tyler Lockett projected for this season? 100. Okay. I've got him with 109. Uh, give me just one second to pull it up. Uh, right. Although I am not giving him an 80% catch rate. Sure. 89 uh, targets. 60, 68 receptions. And then I lied to you. I had 1,018 yeah, yards. Here's what I want to hear, Mike. So real tight. How many yards you got him for? 972. Oh. You, you just changed it. No. <laughs> All, right. All right. That was no, I verified. I didn't pull an Andy. Yeah, well. I wanted to be sure. Hey, I said it'd be right up against it. I will officially change it from 1,018 yards to 999. Yes. To be uh, <laughs> truthful. I thought you were going to change. I thought my you were opinion. going to no, officially no, change my opinion. your vote here to <laughs> no. match your very detailed no. rankings. One of his... Instead. One of his receptions just lost 19 yards. That's all I'm saying. Okay. That's what just happened. <laughs> Out of spite. Okay. All right. Uh, that was Buy or Sell brought to you by Pristine Auction. Right now, we're doing a giveaway at footclangiveaway.com. You can win an Alvin Kamara jersey. One of the ways that you can win that jersey to get an entry is to go and register at pristineauction.com using the code BALLERS. Completely free. Gives you the ability to browse all of their sports memorabilia auctions. Let's talk news. <laughs> News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. It was just one play, Jason. It was one play during the upcoming season where he would have gone for an extra 20 yards, but then he got tripped up. He got I realized early. he got Tur- tri- Turf Monster got him. Well, it was a, a replay review, actually. He stepped out. Uh. He stepped out on a screen pass. I just realized that. Hey. Tyler Lockett. That's how detailed our projections are. <laughs> Tyler Lockett is, a, is definitely an unofficial my guy. Like, I'm... He, if if we were doing my guys as late as we usually do them, he would have. He we all know what that means, Jason. That means that if Tyler Lockett goes ham, that's right. You get credit. Yep. If Tyler Lockett sucks, he's unofficial. It would, look, I didn't say that. No, if you think you're like shedding light on a situation, I'm shedding. This is for this the is, listeners. This yes. is not for you. We no. know who you are. Yes, <laughs> and known, that is exactly right. We've listeners, known for years, listeners, when Tyler Lockett goes ham, I want that credit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is uh, this is news. Jets wide receiver Robbie Anderson missed practice on Tuesday with a calf injury. Adam Gaze came out and said, look, I don't know if it's a concern. Anytime you have a soft tissue issue, it's an unknown. That's why he's day-to-day. We will keep working on it. Hopefully, he'll be ready to go. 11 days. It's so lame. 11 days is a good amount of time to get to get right if, you, if it was a minor strain. Yes, but it's, it's so, lame. so lame. Yeah, it's also it's scary because... While he should be okay for week one, he now carries risk of a re-aggravation. Yeah. And that's the real fear. It's not 
whether or not he'll be ready to go. It's whether or not he's going to hurt it worse once he's back. So the risk rating is higher on Robbie Anderson now if you have your drafts. The upside is still there. I I mean, he was already up against it. I I think he was a good wide receiver. Schedule-wise, he's already up against it. Week one, he should see Tredavious White, one of the best cornerbacks in the league from the Buffalo Bills. If he's already a bit hobbled and just trying to play through something, this is, like I said, so lame. Yeah, it is lame because you spend – I mean, I don't mean you. I mean we, yeah. all of us, the fantasy owner, you at home – so excited for Robbie Anderson's potential. Jason literally brought up the Jets in like multiple uh, contexts this week as a team that he's got good vibes for. Thanks, Jay. You're welcome. <laughs> and now you just have a little bit of a cloud hanging over him. You got a cloud hanging over this guy. Deshaun Jackson suffered a broken left ring finger in Tuesday's practice. The team is optimistic he'll be ready to roll in week one. Again, I was going to light him up. I was going to play him week one. I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable now. We don't know. He's visiting a hand specialist as a precautionary measure. That's what they said yesterday. George Costanza? Uh, no, no, no. That's a hand model. Oh. Not a hand specialist. It's My very bad. different. Um, but, yeah, I, I doubt Deshaun Jackson will be a hand model with how that finger looks right now. This happens to wide receivers pretty frequently. Yeah, he and he'll play through it. He will. But, but it will affect him. Yeah, it's just not what you want. But you don't always get what you want. Uh, Bill O'Brien, not hopeful that Kiki Q2 will be ready for week one. Yesterday, we what all, happened? All we had was a report that he returned to practice. But that was kind of, I guess, a very cursory return. Yeah, it, he, I mean, this is the frustration. If you actually you know, see his quote and watch, he's frustrated. And how could you not be as the head coach of Kiki QT? You, you've never had him. You've only seen little flashes of this great wide receiver that you drafted to be a part of your team, and he is he's just always injured. I mean, he is as bad as it gets out there. I, I love Kiki QT's value early in the offseason. He was one of my favorite targets. There's no way I will draft him. He's just too – his soft tissue is made of tissue paper, and you don't want soft tissue paper. Nope. Like, Great great point. <laughs> Not concerned about Cam Newton. That's what Ron Rivera said for week one. No doubt in his mind that'll play. I don't think fantasy owners were very concerned in the drafts that I've been witnessing, so should be there. And then we brought this name up actually on uh, our Sirius XM show on Monday. Dari Agunbowale. Yes, that's a player. It's an awesome name. He's also going to be the Bucks' third down back to start the year, at least according to beat reporters in Tampa. It's not been a pretty picture trying to sift through the Tampa Bay backfield, but Agumba Wale is getting first team work with Ronald Jones, with Peyton Barber. That's it, how bad a pass <clears throat> catcher and pass protector Ronald Jones is. Then this is why I've been saying all off season. If you can't pass protect for Bruce Arians. You aren't getting on the field. Well, and, and the truth is, Ronald Jones will be on the field. And it will be at the expense of Peyton Barber. And it will hurt if you roster both on, I don't know, your league of record team bench. Did that you, is did it. You, did you pick up a Goomba Wale? Of course. You're going to get the trifecta on Well, there? I'm going to add Ellington oh, as for well. Sure. You got to so scoop want, them up. I want four Buccaneer backs on the bench. That way I can cut four players in week one. It's my four For horsemen. the waiver wires. That's, oh, gosh. The Tampa Bay backfield. Gross. Gross. <laughs> Anybody who sees me roll them into the lineup is just <laughs> licking their chops. That was today's news and notes. As a reminder, grab the Sleeper app. That's where we're doing our Listener League draft today. You can download it for free. And before we jump into the fantasy court, I want to thank today's sponsor, FanDuel. Your drafts are happening. Fantasy football is happening. That means that FanDuel is back. They have more ways to win cash prizes and once-in-a-lifetime experiences during every game, every week. If you've never played FanDuel fantasy football, fantastic. Because new users right now, you're going to get a $5 bonus with their first deposit. FanDuel is a perfect complement to your redraft weekend. You want to get some exposure to these other players. You didn't have a chance to draft them. Maybe people are saying no to your trades. You can still play them. You head maybe over. You, maybe you want Pat, Pat Mahomes. Yeah, maybe you didn't get any shares in Pat Mahomes. That's it's that's a perfect example. With FanDuel, you can pick a new team every week. 
Plus, with the FanDuel app, you can bet anytime, anywhere. No matter how you like to play, there's a contest for you. Tournaments, beat the score, single game, mini, labs, and more. Get in on the action anywhere you want. Sign up for FanDuel now. Get a $5 bonus with your first deposit of at least $5. Go to FanDuel.com slash footballers or download the Fan- FanDuel app. See why FanDuel is, a, is way more than just fantasy sports. That's FanDuel.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, we want to thank White Castle. Not for sponsoring the show at all, for being super delicious. They're so good. We and went, for sponsoring I'm the glad show. they sponsor. Oh, of course. Yeah, yes, that, that, I'm also glad they sponsor. <laughs> but I like White Castle. With My family's them. thankful for They're that. They're so good. So we went out for our foot anniversary. We had two people here who were celebrating their one year under our employment. And uh, we went out to a fancy restaurant. Andy got these sliders. Oh, and they said like on a, a, a bed of onions, and those were garbage. Imposters. I, yeah, they weren't that good. They, well, because I'm used to delicious, awesome sliders now from White Castle, I'm going to need to buy a whole nother freezer for my garage <laughs> to stock up because- That's my White Castle freezer? <laughs> right. Oh, this is my other freezer. <laughs> they they're, might send you one if you say that. <laughs> Look, they've got a one-of-a-kind taste. You know them. If you haven't tried them, if, you, if, if they're not in your area, you can get them at your grocery store- Get them in the freezer section. 100% beef patties. They're great. From the castle or the grocery store, you could satisfy your crave anytime with White Castle. Go to whitecastle.com slash footballers to get $1 off the purchase of any four or six pack White Castle sliders. All right. It's time. The judge has his robe on. The gavel locked and loaded. Let's enter the courtroom. The Fantasy Court. With Judge Giamatti. Plaintiffs Jason and Andy are accusing Mike, the fantasy hitman, right, of putting a hit out on Carson Wentz's enormous value in 2019. Enormous value? Enormous value. So we're accusing Mike. We're accusing Mike of this. That's darn uh, right. We objection. Are. Leading the witness. Um, <laughs> that's just. The He's intro not the witness. Guy. He's the judge. You're leading the judge. That's acceptable. Yeah, you can. You lead look a great judge. today, by the way. Man, so good. That robe. So <laughs> so black. Basically, this this uh, discussion, this uh, case, comes down to the fact that Jason and myself very very. High on Carson Wentz this year. He's a my guy for me. Jason, you 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 have ranked him we've, just like I've ranked him. We've both got him as a top five quarterback. Mike, you've got him down at number 10. 10, 10. The double-digit numbers. That mm-hmm. sounds disgusting. Here are some thoughts about Carson Wentz. One. Your honor. Please your honor, listen to uh, our plea. Your, your honor. Carson Wentz has already been the number one quarterback in fantasy while he was out there a couple years ago in his MVP season. During that time, he was on pace for 4,000 yards, 41 touchdowns, and nine interceptions. Last year, he was on pace for 4,400 yards, 31 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions, which would work out to more fantasy points. The difference, the only difference, is the rushing totals. Last year, he was wearing this big knee brace coming off an ACL injury and was not running the ball. I expect him to be fully healthy. He has not had a brace on. He is mobile. People are talking about we've got the same old Carson Wentz back, and he has the best receiving core of his career, adding DJX, adding J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, a year two from a rookie tight end, Dallas Goddard, who's probably the best tight end in the entire National Football League. May I, Jason? Yes. Uh, he also jumped his completion percentage from 60 to 70% last year, had a better passer rating, was actually playing very, very well. One year removed from the ACL. Now you've got your legs back. you got the ability to run just a little bit more. More confidence in the leg for planting better weapons. We've talked about it. I said it before. Chris Sims came out and said, look, Carson Wentz is the more physically gifted version of Andrew Luck. And we know what Luck has done. Uh-oh. He is being ranked by Mike, in my opinion, and others. The only people that don't have him up in that upper echelon are those that are worried about the injury cloud. It's the basis of availability, not ability. 
And he's got the weapons. Ertz, Jeffrey, who, by the way, Mike, you love Alshon Jeffrey. I do. Miles Sanders. Mike, you love Miles Sanders. I do. What a pass-catching threat he is. Dallas Goddard, Nelson Aguilar, Djax. Who I do I, love Dallas Goddard. Yes, you do, Jason. And we've broken down just the the tangible, measurable impact that Sean Jackson has as the best deep threat in football on any quarterback he's come in contact to, minus Jameis Winston. Better weapons, removed from injury, proven he can be a top three fantasy quarterback, has a great play, play caller in Doug Peterson. And I will end with this, Mike. Baker Mayfield, you have him at five, you have Wentz at ten, and as Jackie Childs would say, that is outrageous, egregious, mm. preposterous to give Baker, who's never done it, the five rank, and Wentz, who has done it, the ten rank. Uh, I, I hear what my colleagues are saying here. I just, I'm not exactly sure where to start. Uh, well, let's start with Carson Wentz last season. Full admit admission of guilt would work for us. Uh, yes. Okay, I, I will be ready for your admission of guilt. Oh. Because last year, while he was playing, he was the quarterback 18 in points per game. His 16-game pace, Jason, I am so glad you brought that up. 4,400 yards, <laughs> yeah. 31 touchdowns. That reminds me of a couple fellas. Last year, Kirk <laughs> Cousins, 4,300 yards and 30 touchdowns. Jason, you have besmirched the name of Kirk Cousins as a fantasy player mm -hmm. last year. Philip Rivers, 4,300 yards and 32 touchdowns. I love the way he runs the ball. Okay, well, Kirk Cousins, Philip Rivers, quarterbacks 11 and 12 on the season last year. Let's get to the rushing fallacy. 2017, when, when uh, Carson Wentz was your, quote, MVP run, mm -hmm. he was averaging 23 rushing yards a game. That's not a running quarterback. That's a mobile quarterback who can move around in the pocket. That's fine. But he doesn't put on rushing yards. We've only seen him for three years, and his rookie year, we saw a 2.6% or 2.6 touchdown percent. He skyrocketed to 7.5% on his MVP season. That's fantastic. Unsustainable. You saw him drop to 5.2%, which is a reasonable number. Djax certainly will help him out, but now he's starting the season with a broken finger. I just have Carson Wentz ranked where he is, who he actually is. It's, he's a fantastic quarterback, but unless you aren't giving me those unsustainable touchdown percentages... He is just right there at that quarterback 10 range. I, uh, I have such a hard time, though, with that argument and then looking at somebody like Baker, who you have ranked five spots ahead, who you're going to have to get that kind of efficiency from to be the number five because he doesn't run the football. and I mean, He runs it less than Carson Wentz does, but it's not for me to decide. Sure, it's for the judge, but I do want to make an objection. Because well, you're my final, my oh, final okay, thought I here I object. is you guys are like, – Yes, he has his best wide receivers, uh, the best wide receiving crew of his career. He's got the best running backs of his career as well. And I'm not talking about pass catching. I'm talking about guys who can actually run the ball in Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders. You think that won't make an impact on their decision to run the ball more? All right, compelling arguments. Mike, uh, we accused you of putting a hit out on Carson Wentz's value. I'm still going to object. Okay. <laughs> the 23 rushing yards a game is a rushing quarterback. That's 368 yards. I wouldn't on call the that year. a rushing it, quarterback. No, it's not. It's not Lamar it's Jackson, fight, fight, Cam fight, Newton. Fight. Stop it. It's not like you know the the guys that are rushing for 600. But when you rush for almost 400 yards, it makes a difference. That was the difference between the fantasy finish because fantasy scoring is stupid for quarterbacks on fantasy football. All right, Your Honor, uh, Judge Giamatti, feel free to weigh in. I rule in favor of the defendant. Oh, you're an Mike ugly Wright. man. You're an ugly He's, idiot. Jason, he still has to rule in a couple more cases. You might want to rein that back. I was talking to Borland over there. <laughs> I wasn't talking to Brooks, that handsome chap. <laughs> Come on, I would never. All right, we ready for another case? Let's do it. Plaintiff Jason Moore is accusing Andy Holloway of first-degree fraud against the Lizard King's reign on the best offense in the NFL. You might want to speak to the actual player. You're accusing me of fraud against Sammy Watkins. We all know who the Lizard King is. Yeah, well. Cold-blooded. Oh. Yes, he is cold-blooded. Your Honor... 
Sammy Watkins is a cold-blooded killer. On the field, when he has been out there, he has been great. He was drafted to be so in the 2014 NFL Draft. <clears throat> yes, it had Odell Beckham and Mike Evans and a highly touted Kelvin Benjamin, but Sammy Watkins was taken ahead of all of them, and he came out and dominated to start his career with Tyrod Taylor. Unfortunately, injuries have derailed his career, and he has not been able to do it on the field for a full season in a long time. It's not very lizard-like. It's not. Well, I mean, lizards regenerate. the tail has grown back, I believe. And I believe he is ready now to play a solid 16 games. But here's the reality with Sammy Watkins. When he was out on the field, he had almost the same target share as Tyreek Hill. He is on the Kansas City Chiefs. He is a touchdown threat. We've seen that his entire career. He's blazing fast. And just speaking to fantasy, when he was out there last season, I mean, we've already seen him with Tyree Kill. He played in eight games. He had three top fantasy finishes, and in six of his eight games, he was a wide receiver 34 or better. Those are solid numbers. I'm not saying he's going to be a top 10 wide receiver, but right now he's being drafted in the 40s at wide receiver, which is basically his floor it's, it's beyond his floor if he's actually healthy. Now, my <clears throat> my uh, <laughs> colleague You're, you're here, not helping your argument. My colleague here is going to bring up the injury risk. He's going to say that... This is a preemptive strike. <laughs> this is uh, lawyering 101, Andy. Yeah. I went to lawyering school. Yep. Um, my my colleague is going to out, bring up... You? Yeah, no, I never shut up. I slept in, <laughs> overslept. Um, my colleague's going to bring up the injury history, and I would just like to uh, bring up the fact that plenty of players have a long injury history. <laughs> Frank Gore, Julio Jones to start his career, plenty of guys. And then as soon as they are not injured and they play 16, we forget all about it. If Sammy Watkins were to play this season 13 games, 14, 15, or heaven forbid, 16 games, you are going to have a top 24 wide receiver for one of the best offenses with the best quarterback in the league. He's already finished every year where he's played more than 10 games. He's finished above wide receiver 40 in each of those seasons. So I believe that it's egregious to say that Sammy Watkins, where he's going, isn't an incredible value and shouldn't be drafted by all. But if you were to draft, by Andy Holloway's rankings, you will never end up with Sammy Watkins because he has ranked him wide receiver 722,000. Mike, you're looking at me. Am, am, I, I, am I good to, to you are, defend myself here? I not just, that I need much. Yeah, yeah, I'm not involved in this case here, but in the wise words of the Lizard King. Oh, wait. Did he weigh in? Now, yes. we call him that because he believes he's a lizard. Now, that's it's True. really not a stretch as to why he gets called that. But he shares wisdom on Twitter from time to time. Yeah, I just wanted to check in. Space time is the knowledge of karma and of us. By invocation, we heal. Oh, that's a smart man. Let me address what my uh, foolhardy colleague bring, brought forth as his case against me. I think it's a self-indicting argument because no player that is so amazing <laughs> should have to be discussed in a way where you prove it to me five years after he was drafted as so amazing. But my main case is this. You can't force me to do something I don't want to do. You cannot force the Lizard King <laughs> on me. It's like trying a food that I've already had before. Example, I know that I already hate black olives, so don't make me try to eat them. Stop putting them on different foods as secret black olive vessels to trick me into eating them and liking them. I don't care if Sammy's a bill. I don't care if he's a ram. I don't care if he's a chief. I don't want any. I already tried it. I know what it tastes like. It left a bad taste in my mouth. The taste had foot sprains and foot soreness and foot fractures and ankle sprains and calf strains and hamstring strains and hip contusions and groin strains and rib contusions. 
It had volatility problems through and through. Rated as one of the most volatile players in fantasy football over the past few years. 5, 19, 18, 0, 13, 3, 11, 30, 11, 1. He's broken 100 yards three times in his last 25 starts. He's actually kind of sort of been on the field quite a bit. Just didn't do enough when you needed it. I'm never going to come around on Black Olives. I'm never going to come around on Sammy the Lizard King because my team don't need it. He's off the board. I don't want it. I don't want that as part of my life. Mm. May I ask one single question? No. Then, Your Honor, you may rule. <laughs> you can ask me after the court. Okay. Rules. Now, I, I want you to know, <laughs> if you rule in favor of Jason, you have to play Sammy Watkins this whole year. Congratulations. What do you got there? The court rules in favor of Andy Holloway. Ah, oh, you are such a disgusting turd! <laughs> Today, science tells us that the essence of nature is coherence. Thank you. Oh, that's to engage with the quest is to become one with it. Wow, this is lizard knowledge. Um, what my, was your one question, My Jason? one question is, have you ever enjoyed a Schlotzky sandwich and said to me, that you actually liked these black olives oh, on no. that sandwich. Oh, no. Has that Judge, ever Judge, you better happened? be ready. Andy. You better be ready. There was one time. Oh! Well, enjoy having Sammy Watkins on your team now. Look, if you put Sammy on a Schlotzky sandwich, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm Hashtag not a sponsor. You, what's great about this is I still have this memory of being a kid, and my dad would do this, this thing with uh, food sometimes where he'd say, Open your mouth, close your eyes. I'm going to give you a surprise. And he put a different food that he wanted oh, me to no. try, a, a food. <laughs> and it was black olives. And I just, from that moment on, he you wasn't, he wasn't my father They anymore. are delicious. All yeah, right. So that's when we, uh, I haven't spoken to him since. <laughs> All right. Uh, one more case. Plaintiff Mike Wright is accusing Jason Moore of wearing third-degree blue-colored glasses while looking at Sterling Shepard. Your Honor. No, I'm, I'm just letting it play forever. <laughs> Your Honor, I'm back. Back again. And this honestly is just, there's not much of an argument to me to be made here. Sterling Shepard is a side salad. He is not a main course. Sounds healthy. Sounds but good for you, Brooks. The New York Giants are missing their main course. Sterling Shepard has uh, had the benefit of playing with Odell Beckham, being on a better offense. We know that Eli Manning is a much, much better quarterback when Odell Beckham is on the field, keeps drives alive. We have seen Sterling Shepard have the chance to play without Odell Beckham. And what happens to his fantasy value? It goes up marginally. He's In the games that he plays with Odell Beckham in, from 2017 to 2018, 16 games, Sterling Shepard was putting up about 11 PPR points a week. The 11 games, the 11, we're talking a sample that is not this isn't the juju sample without Antonio Brown. This is 11 games. When he's when Sterling Shepard is playing without Odell Beckham, he he vaults up the mountain all the way to 13 PPR points a game. He just does not have the skill set to be the number one wide receiver. He needs Batman there. And he does not take this huge jump, in my opinion. Okay. I've heard your idiocy and now i will hit you with brilliance he learned that line at lawyering school that's darn <laughs> you right. always call them an idiot one eight 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 lawyering school mm. uh the numbers check out there don't worry about it look sterling shepherd is a good receiver he is now the number one receiver and if you want to argue it's golden tate he can't be argued for the first quarter of the season while golden tate is out on a suspension that we all knew he would be out from <laughs> <laughs> your well, honor exhibit a <laughs> sterling shepherd last season was the wide receiver 30 as a side salad now odell beckham is gone which my colleague here has already proved helps 
just marginally, sure. just two more fantasy points a game, but it's a good thing. He plays better without Odell Beckham there and can step up into that role. So he's going to go up from wide receiver 30 last year. Now he's the main target. No Golden Tate, no Odell Beckham. I feel like there's a real value here, but your honor, may I call a witness to the stand? You may. Objection. Overruled. Thank you, your honor. <laughs> I call. You didn't state any objection. Just objected. <laughs> yes. <laughs> objection. That's what you do. I Look. don't like it. <laughs> um, I would call to the stand Matthew Harmon of Reception Perception, found <laughs> in the <laughs> Ultimate Draft Kit. Here is uh, Matt Harmon. Do you swear to tell the truth? Yes. Yeah, yes, I do. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? I'm Cool <laughs> Matt Harmon. <laughs> Sterling Shepard has steadily improved in each of his pro seasons, but last year was certainly his best as a route runner. Shepard's 74.6% success rate versus man coverage put him in the 90th percentile among receivers charted since 2014. He also managed an 82nd percentile success rate versus press coverage wow. score. It's Matt Harmon's so Matt cool. Harmon's going to be so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> this is the coolest I can do, Matt. I'm trying to do you justice. The point is this. He goes on to say he dominates in reception perception, and he is clearly good enough to be the flanker. He's good in contested catches, good against press coverage, and good against man coverage. He's a quality receiver who's the number one for his team, who finished wide receiver 30 last year, and now has more targets coming his way. Your Honor, I rest my case. Uh, I will say this. He's probably been under-talked about, if that's a thing. I yeah. don't think I don't think there's been a lot. There's not been enough. Sterling Shepard discussed the hand problem has not helped. If you want to be lined up to move from side salad to main course, the hand injury doesn't help a lot. What do you what are you uh what are you saying, Judge? And before you rule, I just want to throw oh, out man. that he was actually worse last year when Odo Beckham was off the field. Did he just a throw in? Just a throw in. Small little itty bitty sample. Okay. The court rules in favor of defendant Jason Moore. Oh, what a, what a handsome, strapping fellow you are, Judge. And the last thing I will, I will say, say here, yeah, uh, because we need total transparency. Judge, do you have Sterling Shepard on your dynasty team? Yes, because he's a very talented player. Mm. Boom! Uh -huh. In other yes. words, Mike's going to have to appeal to a higher court. Yes, I uh, am. I've been called that higher court at times. I did modify Sterling Shepard's projection during the mm. show. I think I had him a little too low. Do I need to move him up? Yes, you do, you do sir. You do need to move him up I a little bit. One we hearts were, and minds. We were both factoring in, you know, the doubt at the, you know, with the hand injury, and whether he's going, you know, was going to be a hundred percent going into week one. We do have some time for. Uh, well, let's let's do a little mailbag. 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 Yeah. Mike, I'm looking at your microphone, and you've got, like, the pop filter on it, mm -hmm. and it's a little sparkly. Why, it's, it's, why do you have such a sparkly pop filter, Mike? You don't like bedazzle? Okay. That's just, you're a little different than we are. It's I, just a little bit scratchier. I got to shine. I just don't know why you would change it. I don't know why you would <laughs> modify what you had, but okay. All right. If Can't you have, stop me from shining. If you, if you have a question for the show... Go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Jump into a couple questions here. Brent in North Bend, Washington. I drafted Damian Williams in the fourth round as my flex yesterday. I didn't handcuff him with Darwin Thompson, but Dar Darwin Thompson did go undrafted. Should I drop Kalen Balazs for him? To My PPR answer, league. yeah, it's a one point PPR. I would say no, and I want I want to tell you why. And these guys, you can share wh whether you would. It, it's it's an interesting decision to make. The reason I say no is that I think that there is a lot of fire to the smoke of a Kenyon Drake trade from the Miami Dolphins to the Houston Texans involved in the Jadavian Clowney transaction. Uh, same with Kenny Stills. I believe that something's going to happen. I don't think J Jadavian Clowney is going to stay in Houston. He's met with Miami officials. I think something's going to go down. And if something goes down, I still want Balazs in the starting spot more than I do Darwin Thompson. In, and I like Darwin. 
Yeah, I, I like Darwin as well, but this is a floor play. I mean, I would rather have the upside that Damian Williams is the starting running back as you drafted him, and Kalen Balazs is a starting running back as you have drafted him. There's very few scenarios where I like getting my handcuff. One that I talked about yesterday was Zeke because we know that if Zeke misses, Tony Pollard is going to be the starter for those games that Zeke is out. There's no – like if, if, if Damian Williams isn't the guy – it might be Daryl Williams. We, it, it's There's no guarantee that Darwin steps into that starting role. So go for ceiling here at the beginning of the season. I agree. Add handcuffs like halfway through as you make a playoff run. Breaking news. All right, speaking Wednesday, John Lynch indicated Jarek McKinnon suffered another setback. Seriously? In his return to oh practice goodness. on Tuesday, being described once again as a flare-up. <sighs> attempted to return to practice. Uh, yesterday was not encouraging, is the quote from John Lynch. It it reiterates the problem after problem he's had this offseason. It seems like there is uh, – look, there's a chance he gets cut. Yeah. There's, it, a, chance, he's, there's if, a chance he's released with an injury settlement. That's see, what I believe now. If he's not cut, he's at least starting the season on the IR in their – they're not going to bring him back. Now, all your Matt Breida shares late. Yeah. All your Tevin Coleman drafts late. Fifth round, Tevin Coleman. You're going to be very, very happy with what you have with both players. Yeah, I mean, the McKinnon, this isn't like, oh my gosh, I'm sh I'm shocked. This has been something you've been able to see. When he first came off in, you know, early in the off season, he had a flare up. Whenever that happens after the main recovery timeline, you can almost expect there to be more issues along the way. This is why we've been pounding the drum for Matt Breida late. Hopefully a lot of Foot Clan people have him out there. He's going to be a startable fantasy option. Yeah, and and then you start to look at Jarek McKinnon in Dynasty Leagues and wonder if there's any future for him at all. This was not a situation where Jarek McKinnon was this incumbent superstar <laughs> in San Francisco. They need to play the best players they got. It's unfortunate. Uh, Reed in Montreal, Canada. Oh, bonjour. A lot of mock drafts that I have been in, says Reed, have seen Lamar Jackson drop decently late, still available in the final few rounds, along with Josh Allen. Yeah, we've seen the same thing. If that opportunity comes up during a real draft and both were available, who would you prefer? Right now, I believe I have Josh Allen ranked higher than Lamar Jackson in four-point quarterback touchdown leagues, which is what he's in. So I lean Josh Allen by a, a, a hair, but I would go with your own personal conviction between those two. I think they're both good players. Yeah, I, I, I would lean Allen. I think his body can hold up a little bit better than Lamar Jackson's, but I, this is the one situation. There's a few guys at the very end of a draft, a few guys that I am willing to bypass my whatever it is, my sixth wide receiver or running back or whatever, and go with two quarterbacks on a roster to see – how the season starts, two of those guys are Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen. If you can get both, I mean, I, I'm very confident that you're going to have a great, great combined quarterback there. I would be willing to do that. Okay. Uh, Miguel in Dallas has a question. Um, how much importance do you guys give to draft grades? In my Yahoo app, you get a grade based on your picks, and it ranks you amongst the other teams. I was – Confident with my picks. Uh, and then I was graded dead last with a grade of D, despite mm -hmm. having a team with Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, David Montgomery, Evan Ingram, Brandon Cooks, Julian Edelman, and Lamar Jackson. Sounds great. That yeah. is a team with great running back depth. Draft grades don't matter. They're so stupid. They are, and, and, and they make you feel bad or good. And regardless, half the time they're wrong. That's 100% true, and if you get a good grade, you're like, yeah. I do. But they're just as stupid when you get a good grade as you are a bad grade. A good grade could convince you to rest on the laurels of your draft and not make transactions or believe that your team is, I don't know, a super team. And then the, the bad grades could cause you to get discouraged and overreact and tilt trade. They are algorithmic. They are based entirely on that platform's projections, that platform's hypothesis on those players, and – algorithms that they build out to combine players on your roster and decide whether or not you have a better roster than somebody else. They, they can't take into account so many roster construction things. They can't take into account if you've matched big upside players with safe players, if you've got a, you know, a handcuff versus, I mean, it's, 
it's just a computer taking a guess is dumb. You should tell him to eat that grade. Just right. Well, I don't know if, if you order. know what I mean. Yeah. Well, that's terrible. And we're leaving. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> hey, check out pristineauction.com. A signed Devontae Adams jersey, $88. I'm going to get the mics <laughs> off as soon as we can. Take care, everybody. See Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, don't forget about White Castle because they're so delicious. If you got a taste of the post podcast munchies, can get over to a White Castle or your grocery store and pick up some Castle sliders made with 100% beef patties on a bed of steam grilled onions so get crave conquering and go to whitecastle.com slash footballers to get a dollar off the purchase of any four or six pack white castle sliders